Hello, my name is Peter Thompson and I'm with a company called Argos Fryanis. We're an Anglo-Norwegian fishing company and we've been operating in the Southern Ocean since the mid-1990s. Our good friends at BirdLife International asked us to try and briefly explain what we and our colleagues in the fishing community have done over the past three decades to try and help protect albatross populations in the sub-Antarctic Ocean. So we fish for Patagonian toothfish, which is also known as Chilean sea bass in the North American market, and we mainly fish for this around South Georgia and in the Ross Sea, although we do carry out a small amount of research and monitoring fishing for the government around the South Sandwich Islands. So we fish for this toothfish with the bottom longline method of fishing, which involves setting a line on the seabed which has got regularly spaced baited hooks to catch the fish. So in the 1990s, uh, longline fishing for toothfish didn't only start around South Georgia, it also started in other sub-Antarctic uh, island territories. So Kerguelen and Crozet, the French territories, uh, Prince Edward Island over the South African territory, and heard of Macdonald Island, the Australian territories, but little was known at the time of the, the interactions and impact of, of co commercial longlining on uh, bird life and, and possible bycatch implications of that. And the results were that very large numbers of seabirds were being caught on longlines. Uh, the birds attempt to try and dive on the line to catch the bait off the hooks before it, it sinks out of, out of reach behind the vessel, um, to the extent that in 1997 there are an estimated over five and a half thousand birds which were caught in the fishery of South Georgia, which was a, an extremely sobering and obviously completely unacceptable statistic that required immediate and, and dramatic action. So the fishing industry, the, the South Georgia government, uh, BirdLife International and the scientific community, we all sat down together to try and devise real practical measures to significantly reduce or even try to completely eliminate the bird, seabird mortality in the fishery. Um, and within three years, I'm happy to say that we were able to reduce the mortality around South Georgia by over 99%, um, uh, an incredible achievement. And that success has been maintained to the present day when extremely low numbers of, of seabirds have been caught in the fishery, as, as this current graphic shows. So the obvious question is, how on earth did we manage to do that? And really, as a group, we developed a suite of measures which were backed up by extremely robust fisheries regulation and management by the South Georgia government. Um, so in essence, the fishery was changed from being a, a year-round fishery to being restricted to only the austral winter months. So this was in, in an attempt to try and keep fishing activity separate from the very sensitive time of the year when the adult uh, birds are, are feeding their young and, and foraging significantly and extensively around South Georgia. And the government also brought in a ban of the setting of lines during daylight hours, again to try and separate the fishing activity from the foraging activity of the, of the seabirds and a, a number of closed areas were introduced again to keep the fishing activity uh, away from feeding activity. In the industry we, we concentrated on sort of practical onboard measures and I suppose the, the two biggest of those were um, coming up with a, a line weighting regime for the fishing line. So we added weight to the line to try and get it to sink very quickly, to take it out of the range or, or the reach of the diving birds um, as they come in on the baited hooks. And we also devised a system of aerial streamer lines which we deployed around the stern of the vessel to try and shield or, or curtain off the area where the baited line was entering the water to again try and stop the birds interacting with the line and, and, and going after the baited hooks. And the obvious success of these mitigation measures really down to two major reasons. I think the first one was that it was actually a collaboration between, between the, the fishing community, the, the scientific community and government. So there was, there was, a, there was a great sense of buy-in right from day one, which, which meant that these measures were implemented extremely quickly and, and very effectively.
And I think at the same time, the other main reason was the South Georgia government in parallel introduced an extremely robust monitoring and enforcement regime on the fishery just to ensure that these very effective mitigation, mitigation methods were, were being followed properly and universally by all, all participants in the fishery. So a great example of this, uh, <clears throat> this, this regime was the requirement for all fishing vessels to carry an independent government appointed scientific observer uh, who's there and is still there not only to collect scientific data um, but also to to monitor compliance with the bycatch mitigation measures that have been brought into force. Over the last 20 years we, we and the government haven't sat on our laurels um, and the fisherman, fishery has been strengthened with the introduction of a marine protected area uh, in South Georgia. Now the marine protected area is, is designed to protect all areas and all parts of the ecosystem but extra measures have been brought in to help protect the the marine bird life down there including albatrosses so further closed areas have been introduced and, and further temporal restrictions have been made on the fishery also um, and i suppose the most recent addition to the suite of measures that we're using down in south georgia is the introduction of an electronic monitoring um, program on board all of the vessels. So all participants in the longline fishery have to have installed an independent third party installed and maintained electronic monitoring system. Now what this does is it's a suite of CCTV cameras so effectively every hook that's hauled and every hook that is set in the fishery is coming with uh, video footage which is provided to the government. So an extremely good enforcement and management tool which also has been yielding great scientific data. So we're now starting to understand more about uh, bird interactions with fishing vessels and fishing lines. So we can, over the future years, try and refine both the way we fish and, and, and where we're allowed to fish inside the conservation zone. So in South Georgia, we're, we're extremely proud of, of what we developed and how effective it was. And, and we are extremely proud that this has been rolled out across all of the Southern Ocean fisheries and they too have seen similar dramatic reductions in all the bird bycatch including albatross which is fantastic news for these uh, for these breeding communities as so many of them do breed in Southern Ocean, South Antarctic islands. Um, but there is still very much more that needs to be done to try and protect these populations um, from, from two current uh, main threats. One, the obvious threat of climate change and the impacts both on, on, on food availability and breeding sites. And the second one being the, where these populations are exposed to, to fishing pressure, which is outside of the, the extremely well managed and highly controlled Southern Ocean. So an awful lot of these birds do forage further north where they're entering fisheries which are both inside national jurisdictions and in areas beyond nat national jurisdictions, the, the high seas as they're known. And many of these fisheries are surface longline fisheries which come with their own challenges to try and avoid bird bycatch. But, but we are confident that mitigation measures can be developed and they can prove effective in these other areas as long as there is a, a real will to succeed and a collaborative effort between governments and scientists in these other areas north of the, the highly regulated Southern Ocean. So we wanted to be part of the celebrations of World Albatross Day just to share with you, you know, what can be done to try and hold the decline in numbers of, of albatross and, and other uh, breeding colonies in the Southern Ocean. And this can all be done once industry, the scientific community, the NGO community and, and a variety of governments do come together with, uh, with both a will and a timetable to, to change how these fisheries are operated. Um, albatross are, are a sentinel species um, for the general health of the oceans and we have got a duty to stop the decline in numbers. It can be done, it just requires hard work and willpower. So with that message, um, happy World Albatross Day and let's, let's carry on trying to protect these amazing birds. Thank you.